Now that we've walked through the basics of the polar alignment process, in this video I'm going to show you the entire series of steps from start to finish for your Move Shoot Move Star Tracker. The first thing we always have to do of course is get out our tripod and then find north. For me the easiest way to find north is to just look for the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is always going to be somewhere in the northern sky. And it also helps too if you can get out at twilight because about an hour after sunset the brightest stars will be visible but none of the others will and that means the North Star and the Big Dipper and some others will be visible before everything else and that will really help especially when we're looking through the polar scope because if you wait until it gets completely dark out at night you're gonna have a much more difficult time although one of the great things about the Move Shoot Move Star Tracker if you get the laser pointer no matter what that's really gonna help you out uh, but again step number one when we get out in the field is find north you could also use an app on your phone to do this and just you know go on the compass app move your phone around until you find it uh, but that should not be too difficult even if you've gone out one or two times once you found north and you can see the big dipper then we need to find the north star and the easiest way to do that is to take this corner star here in the big dipper draw a straight line out and that will always take you to the north star and just so you know the big dipper does rotate around the north star throughout the night as well as the year so depending on what time of night and what time of year you're out on location the big dipper might be in a different orientation but it's still going to be the same process we draw a straight line out from the corner star and that'll take us right to the north star so at this point you should have found the north star now we can position our tripod and i just look for a nice clear horizon and then grab my tripod really push down on all the legs like this because very often what will happen is that you haven't locked down all your legs uh, all the way and if you push down usually one will start to sink so you can get that all figured out now before it screws us up later in the night also you want to make sure that the tripod is fairly level right now i'm kind of on an uneven surface it looks pretty good to me uh, depending on your ball head you should have a bubble level on there which will help us more in a minute but i'm going to lower this one leg just a little bit until it looks level to my eye and i think that looks a little bit better now is when we can attach our ball head to the tripod you might have already done so already but what i want to talk about next are the different options you can use with the move shoot move first let's talk about what i'm going to be using and that's the benro ib2 ball head i cover this all in the gear module if you want to learn more but this is a good solid reliable ball head i can attach it to here then we can attach our tracker on top of this ball head however move shoot move does make their own accessories one of which being this base right here and this can actually really uh, make your polar alignment much more precise because the way this works is we have a little panning knob which will move the base left and right then we have this we'll call it the altitude knob that's going to move the star tracker up and down and if you get into the bigger star trackers this is essentially what we're going to be using and the main reason we use these again is because we can do very precise adjustments whereas with the ball head it's kind of you know not nearly as precise so i'm going to put this on hold for right now we're going to use a ball head because i'm assuming most of you will have that but we'll talk about this one uh, later on in the video so again i'm going to grab a pretty big sturdy ball head here this is the benro ib2 and just screw that on once my ball head is attached then i can grab my tracker and right now i have everything on a little obin tripod hammock this is quickly becoming one of my favorite camera accessories because I can just leave everything right there. I don't have to keep going back to the car or wherever. This just keeps everything nice and organized. So again, if you want to learn more about that, check out the gear section in the course. Here we have our move, shoot, move, obviously. And this is the Gouda version. I think that's how you say it. Uh, but what we're going to do now is just, if you haven't done so already, you need to put the uh, tripod plate here on the bottom because by default there won't be one there, but every ball head should come with a tripod uh, plate just screwed in there. Then we can mount this on our ball head. Now that we've got the tracker on top, we need to rotate this to face north as well. So I can loosen my panning knob here. That'll move it left and right. And I know north's right up over there. So I can just position it like so. And that's good enough for right now. We just need to get it facing more or less to the north and then we'll continue on from there. Now that we've got our star tracker on top of our ball head and we're facing north, we can add our laser pointer and begin the polar alignment process. So you should have gotten a little rectangular bracket where they got the laser pointer or the polar scope. All we have to do is align it up, tighten down the screw, now it's attached. Then we're gonna grab 
our laser pointer. And for those of you who don't have a laser pointer or maybe you live in a country where you can't get one, that's unfortunate because this really does speed things up. If you don't have the laser pointer, you'll have to use the polar scope instead, which I'll show you here in a minute. But right now I'm just gonna show you my recommended technique. So we're gonna get the laser pointer, slide it in, it's only gonna go in one way, and then tighten down the other screw. Now we can turn it on, point up in the North Star, and pretty much finish our polar hem in about five or 10 seconds. But I wanna caution you, if you're in a pretty urban environment, and there's a lot of planes and things flying overhead or even out in the middle of the desert here, we still have a lot of planes, uh, you don't wanna be shining this all around. So whenever possible, leave the laser pointer turned off and just turn on very briefly. And obviously don't shine anybody's eyes because that can really damage their eyesight. So now what we're gonna do is just aim the star tracker up pretty close to where the North Star should be. Then I'm gonna turn on the laser pointer and then I'll do some little adjustments here on my ball head until the laser is directly pointed at the North Star. And once you've done that, you've officially done your polar alignment. That's all there is to it, thankfully, here with the move, shoot, move. However, if you're gonna be shooting 24 millimeters and up to 35, 50, maybe even 100 millimeters, then this might not be precise enough. In that case, what we'll wanna do is take out the laser pointer and grab our polar scope. And for those of you who didn't have the laser pointer, this is where we're gonna start off. So we'll grab our polar scope and then slide it into the same little bracket. When we look through the polar scope, you're gonna notice that there's a reticle inside. And this is the Skywatcher reticle. So if you have like a Star Adventure or Star Adventure Mini, it's the same polar scope basically. But what I want you to do is crouch down, look through your polar scope, and you should see zero, three, six, and nine. We need to line it up like a clock with zero at the top and six at the bottom. So I can loosen the screw again and then just turn the polar scope while I'm looking through it and get it all squared up. And there we go. Now, if you can't see the reticle, then you'll wanna make sure you have your headlamp handy. This is a very useful tool for our polar alignment process because when we turn this on, you should have a red light function built in to your headlamp. And what I normally do is I just crouch down over the front of my polar scope and shine the light very quickly in from the front. And when I do that, I'm able to very quickly illuminate the reticle and see what I'm doing. Anyway, once you've gotten the reticle lined up then, we can continue on with our polar alignment process. So for those of you who use the laser pointer like I demoed, at this point you should see the North Star somewhere inside of that polar scope. It's usually gonna be the biggest, brightest star in there in most cases. If you don't see a big, bright star in there, then I would take the polar scope out, put the laser pointer back in, and just make sure that you're still hanging up to the same spot. Also, now's a really good time to make sure that this ball head is locked down because I see this all the time where at the very end of this process, people attach all their camera gear, and then the ball head comes loose from the tripod and they have to go all the way back to square one. So you might as well do this at this stage, really tighten down that ball head and make sure it's not going anywhere, as well as the panning knob here, because sometimes people don't tighten that down and the ball head will come loose. So there we go. Then if you need to, again, put in the laser pointer, repoint up at the North Star. Then once we have the polar scope back in here, we can continue on. So for this to work, you are gonna need an application on your smartphone. I normally use the SAM console app. This is a free download for both uh, iPhone and Android. Once you have the Star Adventure mini console app though, we can open it up. This was designed for another star tracker, but it has everything we need for the move, shoot, move. What I want you to do is go to the polar clock utility. From here, you should see the exact same reticle that we see in our polar scope, which is awesome. Then we can click on location in the upper right. And you just wanna make sure it is pulling in your current latitude and longitude, otherwise this won't work properly. But once you see it's pulling in your correct location, we'll go back. Now what we need to do is look again at that reticle and position the North Star exactly as we see it here in the app. In this case, the North Star is right about on the six o'clock marking on our reticle. So now I need to position my ball head. That way the North Star is exactly at the same spot. However, this is a problem I ran into last night that you're gonna encounter as well. Everything in this polar scope is upside down and reversed. So when you go to make your adjustments, you're gonna think you have to move the ball head one way, but in reality, it's gonna be the complete opposite. And this can be very difficult to work around because everything's just not going the way you anticipate. And that is one of the problems of using a ball head is that this is uh, more difficult than it needs to be. And that's where this little uh, panning and tilting head will come in handy, which I'll show you more about in a minute. But what you wanna do is crouch down, look through the polar scope, 
and then move your ball head and get the North Star as close as you can. Again, in this case, right about on the six o'clock marking. And it's very possible at this stage that you'll lose the North Star entirely and not be able to find it. If that happens to you, just take out the polar scope, grab your laser pointer, put it in the hole, turn it on, and just make sure you're still angled up to where you need to be. If not, adjust your ball head, then you can put back the polar scope. So that's one of the nice things about using the move, shoot, move, because with all the other star trackers, if you lose your polar alignment, good luck getting it back. It can be very difficult, especially if you're doing this in the middle of the night when there's a lot more stars out. And as I mentioned before, once you do a little bit of adjustment, lock everything down, and in order to see the reticle, you might have to grab that headlamp, you look over the front, hold it in front of you, and just flash it back and forth. And that'll allow you to see the reticle and the North Star at the same time. Once you've gotten things as close as you can, now we can attach our ball head and our camera, turn on the tracker, and begin shooting. That's the basics of the polar alignment process. Next though, I wanna show you how to use the pan and tilt base instead, because like I said, this should help make your life a lot easier at night because rather than having to move the ball head entirely at the same time, we can do just one axis at a time with this head. Okay, I've gotten the panning and tilting head attached. I wanna make sure everything's nice and tight so it doesn't go anywhere. You can see it already came loose. So I really wanna to torque this thing that way I know it's secure on the base because if not, I guarantee that's gonna come back to haunt you later on. And the way I have my Arca Swiss plate right now, it's not gonna fit on here. So I'm gonna to have to loosen it, turn it 90 degrees and then tighten it down. And there we go. Now it will slide in properly like so. And there's basically two knobs that we need to worry about here on the panning and tilting base. There's what you might call our azimuth screw. That's gonna move things left and right. That's a smaller one here on the base. So if I turn it, I can now move left and right. Then the big guy here on the left, that is our, we'll call the altitude knob. That's going to move things up and down. And if you look very closely, you'll even see that there's some latitude markings that correspond to your current latitude. So in this case, I'm about 37 degrees north, and I can dial that in here somewhat close, but these are nowhere near precise markings. It goes 30, 60, 90 in a very small amount of time. So I would just use them as a very rough guideline. But it's gonna be the same exact process that we saw with the ball head. First, we'll grab our laser pointer, slide it into the bracket, and then we'll tighten that down. Then we'll use our altitude and azimuth knobs to move the tracker exactly where we need. Once the laser pointer is pointed up at Polaris, we'll tighten everything down, and then we can swap out for our polar scope, align the reticle so it's sitting correctly, double check our app to make sure where we need to position it. Then we'll look through here and move it left and right, up and down. And I think that's really gonna help make things much easier than using a ball head. Uh, I've got a lot of experience using bases like this and only minimal experience using a ball head and I can tell you it can be quite difficult. And I wanna stress here that if you're gonna be shooting 14 to 24 millimeters, you don't have to be super precise. If I can see the North Star somewhere inside the reticle, even if I can get it dead centered up in the crosshair, that's good enough for what we're doing. And you should be able to shoot two, three or four minutes even at 14 millimeters with a rough polar alignment. But again, if you're gonna be shooting 24, 35, 50 or higher, then in that case, you will want to attach the polar scope, make sure you get as close as you can to the app, and that'll allow you to shoot longer exposures with your lenses. And before we go, I wanna make sure that I explain the polar alignment process, like what we're actually doing, that way you understand this. So if you were to look up to the northern sky right next to the North Star, that is the North Celestial Pole. That's where all the stars appear to rotate around, is that very specific spot. The North Star itself is a little bit off center from the North Celestial Pole. That's why we're putting the North Star inside of that circle. Then the cross in the center, that should be pointed precisely up to the North Celestial Pole where all the stars rotate around. Then when we turn on our star tracker here, after we've attached all of our camera gear, the tracker is very slowly gonna move our camera with the stars. And that's what ultimately allows us to shoot longer exposures with our camera now without any star trails. So hopefully the polar alignment process makes a lot more sense now. Very simply, if you're gonna be doing Milky Way photography with a wide angle lens, all you really have to do is attach your tracker to a ball head, slide in the laser pointer, turn it on, move your ball head until it's pointing up to the North Star, tighten everything down. Then you can come over here, attach your camera, turn on the tracker and start shooting. 
It's really that simple. However, if you're going to be shooting 35 millimeters and up, or if you're in the southern hemisphere, you'll also want to get the polar scope. And now that you know how to use the polar scope, you can do an even more precise polar alignment and shoot longer exposures without star trails. So coming up in the following videos, we'll look at how to properly attach all your camera gear, we'll look at what camera settings to use, and then I'll just kind of walk you through exactly how it's everything up on a normal night.